All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. Today, you guys are attached to my chest because we're gonna go around today and I'm gonna show you from hopefully start to finish the process that I go through multiple times a year, typically twice a year. I really don't like to do this more than twice a year of moving my fig trees in and out of storage to start and end the season. Right now we are starting the season as it is officially the spring. And I think the chance of frost has passed. Today is the, I think it's the 19th of April. We are after, <laughs> we're after tax day, officially. And looking at the 10 day forecast, um, I think we are away from all the frost. Now, there is a potential tonight and even tomorrow night that we could see a frost, although very unlikely. Tonight, it's going to be rather windy. And then tomorrow, both nights, really, we'll probably see about 40 degrees, which really isn't, really is not enough. So I feel pretty confident starting this process, getting these trees out here. Uh, we did see a frost, a very, very, very light frost a few nights ago, something like that. Can't remember exactly what the date was. A lot of the days are blending together because tax season, you know, it's crazy. But um, that was at least happened, that had happened, a frost, or it was expected. We had a frost warning. And a lot of people had contacted me even before that, before that day, before that frost and said, Hey Ross, what are you doing with your trees? Are you going to bring them out? And I said, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to wait. I'm going to be a little bit patient because in all honesty, there's no rush to get these trees out here. For me, there is right now because I'm going away. And I'd like to get this done rather than having to come back and have a mountain of work to do outside. I like to break it up. But as you can see here on this tree or a lot of these trees that have been underneath the sunroom in storage, as most of you guys have a very, very, very similar situation. I would highly doubt that your trees look very different than mine. I mean, maybe they're not awake at this point, but typically they will be. And you'll see that these these new shoots are coming up here out of the tree and they've been doing that. They even have a couple leaves. So this is really pale green growth. It's not green, it's yellow. And this isn't good for in terms of bringing them out here and adjusting them to the sunlight. However, this whole process has already kind of been going because the, the, the storage area here is warm this process has already started. So in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, what's really the rush? If I were to put them outside, yeah, they would probably adjust to the sunlight. It would take them, you know, some time to do that. I don't know, maybe a few days, three to five to seven days. Once they adjust to the sunlight, well, that's good. That's what we want. And then assuming it's warm enough out here, which typically it's not, then they start to grow. So that's kind of the issue is that even if you do bring them out here, let's say the middle of April, which we are a little bit past the middle of April now, right? We're only four days past that. Or let's say you even bring them out here as early as humanly possible. Well, it's just still too, it's just too cold out. And I'd rather personally take these trees out of here when it's somewhat warm. I would rather have them in an environment that is warm and keep them in that environment for as long as possible. Until, of course, outside, it does become warm. Now, I think we're at that point. Maybe you could have made an argument as people had contacted me there was probably some benefit of getting them outside 
before that frost that I just mentioned. So I'm sure there was, and that probably would have been the right move, but we did have a frost and I don't want to have to be moving these trees in and out, in and out. As you're going to see, this is a lot of work. I also don't want to be covering the trees away from the frost because I did that over here, which we've already moved the very young trees I have, the one gallon size trees, which I've set up a propagation area over here. These are a lot of the trees that will be sold uh, this upcoming spring. So these will be the first to go out and I just don't want them to be damaged, but they're easy to be protected. I mean, it's just very easy to wrap, throw some blankets over top. Those are some moving blankets and throw some pots over top. So I figured, well, let's just get them out because even if there is a frost, which there was, it'll be easy to protect. Them. And it was. Do I want to protect all the trees? Do I even want to protect those small ones? No. So that's the deal. <laughs> there is pretty much how you should understand it, at least how, what my thought process is on this whole thing. Now I figured, because we are doing this, and this is not really the most entertaining video. I mean, it's pretty repetitive, right? Ross bends down, <laughs> picks up a pot or a couple pots brings them outside, puts them here on the patio, and then repeats that process for like a hundred times. This would be a nice video, I figured, for people who, I don't know, maybe wanna listen to my sweet, soothing voice. Uh, <laughs> as they're trying to fall asleep. I mean, that's not unrealistic. At least I don't think. I do that sometimes. Fall asleep to uh, particular videos on YouTube. And you know what? Uh, I would not put it past someone to do the same exact thing to this video. But if you are here to learn, which is what a lot of our videos are really about, teaching you guys um, and we'll have some of that you guys are going to learn something I really want to beyond you know just showing you guys the work that's involved which I think is really the big part of this uh, I would also like to show you the work that's involved with so many of the other things that we do beyond this. Um, unfortunately, I've already done so much this spring. And it really would have been nice to have this set up, this GoPro here, when I pruned all the trees, when I trained all the trees, when I started feeding the soil by doing some chop and drop with all the cuttings I took, all the prunings I took, I should say when I set up these tunnels, when I planted the garden, when I weeded the strawberry bed, when I made big cuts here at the top of these peach trees, uh, when I planted the seeds, when I planted the transplanted in the crops. I've already done so much this spring. Uh, but in the future, I'm gonna hope that I get to show you guys again, the amount of work that will go into these trees. It's beyond just set putting them here on the patio. Maybe I'll get to it today and this big moving process a little bit early and show you exactly what I'm gonna do to these trees because they're gonna be out here on the patio. This is not done. Just moving them out here is not enough. I need to water every single one of them a lot. I need to feed every single one of them with some slow release that I have. I bought that stuff before the gas price uh, prices uh, rose to ungodly amounts. 
Um, what else do I have to do? Make sure all the tags are there and I have to train the trees properly. So it's not enough to prune properly, but I'm pruning with the anticipation of also staking so that this branch, although it is very close together, like you see, this needs to be spread apart. I also will do some thinning and maybe even some pinching as maybe I would like to remove the apical bud as it stands currently to encourage a lot of lower branching like on this tree here is branching out pretty well. This branch here has a lot of apical dominance and may only really grow from this point. So it may make sense actually to cut that off and allow the tree then to put out better branching because the form on a lot of these trees is, is pretty well set up. As we discussed in a recent video that I did. And the, the main concern now at this point is getting the tree to branch out, put out many fruiting branches. Um, you'll notice that when I'm bringing some of these in and out or out of the, the sunroom here, is that I'm doing it with two hands because I've noticed some of the branches, you know, very up high here at the top were just shoved, these trees were just shoved in here. I don't want to break this new growth. Would it be the end of the world? No, but as I have discussed as well a while ago, keeping a lot of these apical buds, especially this one here, I mean, look at the difference in the thickness of the new branches. This is so much thicker up here, therefore it's stronger, better growth, puts out more fruits easier, and will give you a better harvest. So really I want to try to preserve as many of those tips as possible. I don't think this is really often discussed enough. Certainly not in the hobbyist community. Uh, this is definitely something Hans has alluded to. By the way, other trees like this one here are not even awake. This was an air layer that I took off. The tag on this one is uh, Bergen Unknown. So finally I have myself a Bergen Unknown tree in a container because the one in the ground has been uh, establishing itself but very slowly. It's taken itself quite a bit of time but these air layers I find for whatever reason detached in the fall taking their sweet time waking up this year which is not ideal i'd rather have them awake and already leafing out at this point than doing nothing that's for that's for certain you know the nice thing about some of these black pots is they have handles on them and also some of these blue pots, these fabric pots, also have handles on them. What I'm doing here in a, in a way is I'm organizing these trees. I am organizing these trees. It may seem like this is just random, but the very young trees that you see here, very small, not established at all just yet. We'll go over here. This is the area that gets not a ton of light. As we go a bit this way, we get more light. And as I, I think personally, as we go over here with the larger pots that we'll eventually get to, this gets more light over here. So I'd rather have the smaller ones that typically are gonna produce no fruit or will produce limited quantities of fruit and certainly lower quality of fruit. I'd rather keep them over here. This butterfly bush will get rather big uh, and shade out a lot of this area here. So this is just a section for growing. As they start to get larger like this, I want it to branch out, I want it to grow. We'll move it over into its own area. Same thing with this tree here. This should branch out and grow, but 
as the season progresses, I will be moving individual pots without a doubt. Because if this Sementino Rosso tree that you see is not going to branch out that well, it's just going to continue to grow as a whip. Well, I may stop that process. I may force it to branch out. But also, if it's going to just kind of not take up a ton of space, then I'll leave it over here and put these trees very close together as the spacing here will be very close. They'll be basically touching each other as you see like this. So, and really with no room in between them. But again, if things start to branch out a bit better, then uh, I will be moving them so that these trees can get more light. And of course, staking them, positioning the pots and pruning are really the key ways to maximize the light that the potted trees receive every year. And I cannot stress, I've talked about this so many times, how critical what I just said is. Probably the most important thing you can do for your trees. Now here is actually an air layer that we just looked at. I just glanced over really quickly. That actually is a wake. This one here, you can see it's branching out. This one is uh, what? Coldenama gigantina. Again, I planted a lot of these trees as one gallon sized pots years ago in the ground. It takes them a year or two to get established. They haven't fruited all that much, if at all. And now that I've gotten the trees established, I take an air layer off of the tree. I air layer the tree, put that into a container. Then I have a backup. But I also have maybe even a slightly more, because of the spacing I have, here on the property with the trees planted, you know, two feet on center. It is much more reliable to have them in these containers. Uh, it's just too close of a spacing, I think, combined with the dieback. Now, if I had no dieback, everything survived the winter. As I believe now, after this winter, we will get into this, I think, in its own separate video. But a lot of the dieback I've seen with this cut and cover method is actually due to the cold and not due to um, frying the trees from too much heat. I actually think it just is not enough protection in the winter. It's probably a combination of both, but if I showed you the trees underneath these tunnels, if I could show you as they've progressed, I really just truly believe that a lot of the, a lot of the wood is uh, damaged. And then when they're exposed to these higher temperatures, you then finally see it. It's not actually that the damage, or I should say, the higher temperatures themselves are damaging the trees it's just when you see the higher temperatures you finally see the extent of the damage from the winter now this winter migration thing that i do a lot of growers do not just me i'm not the only crazy person doing this there are other people <laughs> as deeply obsessed as i am many other people, for those of you who don't know. But um, this is not even really the full extent of it because, as I'll show you, there's a million and one trees in the greenhouse. The problem with the trees in the greenhouse is I can't move them out of here yet. I would like to, because we're really running out of sunlight in here and the trees are way too big. But 
these need to come out of here. Maybe I can move some in to give them a little bit of a head start, actually, that we just took out of the sunroom. I could put them in here and move some of these out. But the problem is I'm leaving. I'm not gonna be here. I would normally move them out, place them right along here, and get them adjusted to the sunlight because when they're in this greenhouse, believe it or not, they are getting a lot less light than you think. So when you move them out into full sun, or into the actual sun that is not diffused, the leaves could get burned. So you have to do this very carefully and then I move them here where the sunlight is relatively the same as, this, as if it was in the greenhouse in terms of the duration of light, but the intensity is different. So they have to adjust now to the new intensity. Then I move them down here where we get more sunlight typically and now that we're kind of where we're at, where I'm standing away from the greenhouse, two to three days later, I then move them to the patio. So the whole process takes about a week or more to get them on this patio. Uh, moving them out of the greenhouse to that first spot, which takes two or three days, then two or three days in that new spot, and then they finally can get moved over here, which is about, yeah, it could be, I guess, about five to seven days, roughly. The slower you do that, the better. So I'm not gonna be here though to do that, to move them. And what would happen is if I put them there on the grass and left them there for the duration that I'm gonna be away, uh, I would kill the grass. By the way, anyone interested, I will be away, but probably by the time you're watching this video, I will be back. I don't expect to be able to upload this actually before I leave. But um, I'm going to Florida to see my 90 year old grandparents. That's where they live. So this is the, this is the, I guess the spacing here that I would like for these trees that are actually gonna fruit and produce good fruit. I don't know exactly what that is. Instead of on top of each other, which would be a foot apart, they're now about 18 inches, 18 to 24 inches apart. Sounds about right. These trees are still not totally mature, far from it. This one here has got a nice shape called Arona. Whereas this one maybe, because of the amount of the amount of fruiting branches and the space that it will take up, I might be better off moving it over there where I give the trees more space. Some of these others, they can afford to fruit and will produce well in less light, or less less uh, area that I give them. But typically, typically they should be in, a, in more light. The more light you can give them, the better. If only I was, if I had that luxury, but I do not. This would be a great tree, I think, to put against the, the house because I don't expect this air layer to branch out all that much. So I'm gonna put that there. This one over here somewhere. And again, you can see how well spaced these branches are right now, but I will have to stake all these branches and really make sure the form of each individual tree is right. And the branching, the spacing of not only each individual tree. Oh, this is really dangerous here. I don't want to break this. There we go. So not only each individual tree, as I said, but there's good spacing between the trees themselves. 
Uh, this year, I imagine the patio will be covered with trees. I think uh, I will have more trees on this patio than I ever have had in the past, which is a bit insane to think about. But this year, I really have tried to stay away from containers in the past, but I'm moving. And I'd like to get a lot of the trees established. I don't want to stop continuing this quest that I'm on simply because I'm moving or simply because I'm running out of space. The space problem will not really be a problem soon, I hope. This does not want to come out, okay. You know, these potted trees are a lot of work, guys. It's not really worth it. As I say, uh, you know, I think they are a bit, a bit easier to get than the fruit. So I can see a world in which I will always grow these figs in containers and, you know, not only that, but, uh, you know, it's easier for them to fruit, but it's just easier to trial them rather than planting them in the ground somewhere. I think that could be, it's more of a permanent thing, probably a mistake. So whenever I realize that I really want the tree, it will have a permanent home. And believe it or not, I think a lot of the trees I have will be downsized in this move uh, that are yeah, the trees that are currently placed in the ground, I should say, planted in the ground, those will be downsized. There are just some varieties I have that are clearly inferior to others for this location. I think it'd be nice to have quite a big collection and maybe I will change my mind to maintain a large collection for the purposes of maintaining a large collection, but I don't know. I don't think that's necessarily worth my time and energy in the future. Uh, especially because I found so many really, really good varieties. And it's not like my collection will dwindle drastically. Because I've already found 20 varieties. I have a top 20 list that are really, really respectable varieties for this location. So I'm not concerned about, you know, certain, just not having enough trees. <laughs> I think that's, that's a crazy, that would be a really crazy thought. And someone might be thinking that. There's another air layer that actually has leafed out. That's nice to see. And it's leafing out well. This is one I'm actually really looking forward to. It's called Verdino Giacomo. I don't really know many people who actually have that one. That should be a really, really tasty fig that dries well. We just lost something. One of the buds broke off, I'm sure, somewhere. And also somewhere in here, I have to go through all these trees. Some of them may be rootstock. I have purposely put them, I think, over here intentionally as rootstock. This one here, Sela Senora Sinuera is rootstock. This is where all the rootstock goes. Up here. 
Why? Because it's easy to graft up there. They're elevated. Also, they don't need a ton of light. There's another rootstock. Can't graft until the trees are awake and until the temperatures in the air are gonna be consistently over the next week around 78 degrees. Otherwise, kind of a mistake. So we need a nice warm spell sometime early in the spring. That's when the grafting will be. And there won't be that much of it. To tell you the truth, I have about 20 or so trees for rootstock. I have some scion wood, not a ton, actually set aside for that purpose. Uh, most of it is Black Celeste, Verdino del Nord from Vladimir Oroco or Figoin as you could say. So for me, those are really the only two varieties, I think. Uh, if I had other scion of Bertolino, I think those are my top three. And I'd rather just have as many trees as those, as those three as humanly possible. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't really have an established Bertolino tree just yet. I will at the end of this year. And I will get to share, as I've been sharing with many people, with uh, these particular varieties, letting you guys know what, what is actually the good varieties, the good stuff. No crap attached, no fancy name. The actual good varieties for this particular climate. Grease all of that. This ain't rootstock, but it'd be nice if this guy could fruit. Patiently waiting for many years for this this variety. And it's finally healthy. That takes a long time sometimes with some of these trees. Just very simply for them to be healthy. It's it's crazy. Um, that is the reality sometimes. Here's a rootstock. I think this is a raspberry latte. Yep. This is in a 15 gallon size pot. A real pain in the butt lifting these things. It's starting to rain on me here. How long have we been doing this? You know what? It's a lot of work, this whole process, and there's so many more trees that you won't even get to see because of that greenhouse. I have to do that another day. But the amazing thing is, I love this. <laughs> I like doing the hard labor, all this work. It's a, it's a workout. I'm, you know, I have a nice back. <laughs> so I've been told, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> Um, but, uh, I enjoy this thoroughly. I do. This one's really leafed out well. This is going to be a super, potentially a super productive tree. Let's see what the variety is. <sighs> For Desca. No, For Judo. Ooh. All right, prosciutto, one of my favorites. I really wanted to plant 
I did plant, excuse me, one of these in the ground. <clears throat> but uh, I really don't know if it survived. It took a beating. And I'm not really uh, too happy about it because I really wanted to have one of those in the ground that would be established. You know, as I've said to you guys before, what I would do is if I was starting a new collection, um, I would plant the tree, whatever the fig is that I got first, I'd plant it in the ground. Because creating many trees from that tree and getting many cuttings from that tree is a lot easier and there's a lot more of them. Once it's in the ground and establishes itself really well, shit. Oh, excuse my language there, guys. Sometimes the handles on these black pots, they don't last forever, these things. You can see this it tore in my hand. And you got to be careful with these things, but guess what? I'm not careful right now because I'm trying to get this done. This is some kind of rootstock. I don't, I'm not keeping track. Some of the rootstocks, if I really wanted to know, I could find out, I guess. But, uh, because this, what this was, was, <laughs> what this was, was, this was a uh, grafted tree that I had, I had, put a scion on that years ago and it got established I really liked it whatever that whatever it was and then I killed the tree by planting it in the ground everything above the scion and the graft union excuse me died so last year when I took it up out of the ground put it in this container it sent up some suckers the tree will always live the rootstock will always live. And that's what this is. So instead of just getting rid of the tree, I'm going to graft onto it again. I would like to have more trees of specific varieties for sure as well. So grafting specific varieties would be nice. I would like to have more trees of uh, Petit de Argentile, um, De La Roca, Verdone from Nikki. There is a whole host of them, to be honest. And that's one easy way to get many trees. Uh, we're doing a lot of rooting this year, though. So that's hopefully going to get me those trees, those extra trees that I want of uh, particular varieties. This is a rootstock. It says Dels Hermitons, but um, that's what was here on this tree before I planted it in the ground and it died. So same story with this one. There's new shoots there. I can graft onto. I don't want to waste anything, you know? And what's nice actually about when the tree dies like that and it's coming back from the rootstock from a very low height, um, the tree is then sending up really healthy shoots, like really healthy shoots. And those, those healthy shoots are great, fantastic. Exactly what you want uh, for grafting. So this stuff over here would make perfect rootstock. Doesn't get any better than this. This is just very healthy, grows well, and uh, especially disease free. That's what you want. At least if the disease, the virus, the fig mosaic virus is present, it's not expressing itself. The uh, virus is in a state of uh, maybe dormancy. I don't know. We won't. We don't really know. But I can tell you, it's a pretty darn good guess. 
of what I think is actually scientifically happening when you rejuvenation prune or when you prune your tree way back. This is a Black Beauty 10 rootstock. Not a huge fan of this variety, but it makes a great rootstock. It's a very good grower. And again, it got killed. Actually, this was a sucker I ripped up. Sometimes when I bare root the trees, I uh, take some suckers with me. I find some suckers in the pot and it's easy to remove the suckers. That's exactly, I think, what that tree is right there. It is a sucker from my uh, original Black Beauty 10 tree that I had. This is a nicely shaped tree. I wonder what this is. Recover. Problem with my recover, guys. I have a lot of these trees. I wanted to sell them. I wanted to uh, grow a lot of these. Is that it's dropping fruit? So it really it put out a ton of fruit last year. They all dropped. I don't understand exactly why. I had a lot of irrigation going to that tree purposely. Now, from my experience photos that I've seen of uh, Recover uh, from Thierry is that it is a uh, it's just grease tasting gene by a different name talk to Thierry he doesn't know what it is I identified it as grease tasting gene uh, problem is the thing's been dropping the real recover though, which Thierry says is that is not the real recover because he says the real one, the real recover is a Smyrna requires pollination. Could be that I just actually have the real recover. Maybe his treatment is the real recover and if that's why it's dropping fruits, I don't know. A lot of questions. A lot of questions. That's just what comes with growing all these fig varieties here, guys. 